Okay, the tape is rolling. Pamela. Excuse me, ma'am? She said Pamela. Uh, maybe she prefers not being called Mrs. Voorhees. Mrs. Voorhees, I'm Police Chief Tom Kelly. Detective Madry and I want to ask you a few questions, if that's all right. Pamela? Uh, we're very sorry about the loss of your son. And we appreciate you... F His name was Jason. Yes, ma'am. Jason. I understand he was uh, 12 years old and he was not uh, capable of normal... The report says his mind was... There is nothing wrong with my son. Jason is a wonderful boy. He just needs to be watched over. I always have done that. I've always protected him. Always. My Jason is very special. Yes, ma'am, I'm sure he was. I understand you are the cook at Camp Crystal Lake and... I was promised that these counselors were responsible. That's why I took the job. These Christian teenagers would help look after my son while I worked. That's why I took this job. I was lied to. Mrs. Voorhees, I'm sure these kids were just... Fucking. That's what they were doing. That's what all of them were doing. No, no, ma'am. The counselors were... Were you there? No, you were not. Mrs. Voorhees, please. I was there, doing my job, washing the dishes of these selfish, irresponsible... Ma'am, you need to... <laughs> you don't... You don't understand. I heard him. I heard my Jason calling for me from the lake. He was calling for his... his mother. Mommy... Help, Mommy. Help me, Mommy. <laughs> Ma'am? But it couldn't have been him, I kept thinking. It had to be just me imagining, you know? When you hear a voice sometimes in your head? Captain, I'm gonna get Mrs. Voorhees some water. Why don't we take a few minutes to... So I didn't go to my baby. Because I thought he was safe. I thought he was sleeping cozy in our cabin. But none of them were doing what they promised me. Jason was left all alone. They were not protecting him. They didn't care. Having sex was more important. Mrs. Voorhees, we are going to stop now. We're going to get you some water and... He couldn't swim. Did you know that? I tried to teach him. But he was... He was terrified of the water. I'm going to send Deputy Kroger to the diner. What would you like to eat? Captain, could you shut off the tape recorder, please? Why would he go out there in that tiny little boat? He was trying to be brave. He wanted Mommy to know he was a brave boy. He was 10 years old yesterday. Did you know that? Did any of you know it was his birthday? Okay, Mrs. Voorhees. That's all we need for the moment. <laughs> Has anyone found him yet? My Jason? Oh, God, my baby must be so cold. Testing? Testing? Okay, Mrs. Voorhees. Oh, I'm sorry. Would you prefer I call you Pamela? Ma'am, do you have a preference? Joe, let's just get on with it. Yes, sir. Uh, Mrs. Voorhees, you said Jason was your only child. That's correct? Jason is my only son. And his father, uh, deceased since 19... I don't know. I don't know where he is. You mean where he's buried, ma'am? No. I don't know where Jason's father is. I haven't seen him since he... Let me see that. Mrs. Voorhees, this statement says you are widowed, that your husband is dead. My husband was killed, but he was not Jason's father. So you were married before, ma'am? No, this man did not marry me. We met, it doesn't matter where we met. He held me down by my throat. He forced himself into me. He made me stare into his eyes as he, he... Raped you, ma'am? I tried to stop him. But he was too strong. It was his eyes. His eyes were... He had so much hatred. I couldn't stop him. He'd kill me. Did you report this? Pamela, did you ever report him? What was done was done. It didn't matter anymore. Nothing mattered. I just needed to take care of my son. 
My dear Jason. Sir, we have a report there's a major storm coming in. We have to call off the search. We're having the men get off the lake and resume tomorrow. Okay. What do you mean, okay? My son is out there. You have to find him. I'm sorry, ma'am. It's not safe being on the lake if there's a lightning strike. You fucking bastards! Go find my little boy now! Sit down, Mrs. Voorhees. No! God damn you! Mrs. Voorhees, you need to calm down. Are you heartless? He's my child! He's down in that lake! Find him! Let go of me! Let go, you fucking animals! You'll pay for this. I swear to God, you will pay for this! You fuck! Jason? Jason, are you awake? Baby, are you dreaming? You can hear mommy, can't you? Jason, you know I love you so much. I never want to lose you. Never. You're my baby. You're... Shh, baby. I know you're scared. But these men are going to help me find you. I'm coming now to get you. Mommy would never leave you. Never, ever. You're my son. My Jason. No one will ever take you away from... All right, Mrs. Voorhees. We're going to give you a ride home now. If needed, we'll continue this tomorrow morning. I'm not going home without my son. Mrs. Voorhees, we're going to start searching the lake as soon as there's light. No, I will not leave him alone. He's never been left alone. You take me to him. Chief, the recorder's on. I remember you turning it off. I did. Uh, Pamela, why did you turn... Take me to my son! It's late, and he needs to be in bed. Joe, shut the recorder off. No! God damn you, you just... No, god damn you! God damn all of you! Is this thing working? Okay, now it's on. Good. Uh, Mrs. Voorhees. Uh, Pamela. Pamela? This is Dr. Jarvis. Have you ever met him before? He's been the family doctor in Crystal Lake for... I don't know him. Hello, Mrs. Voorhees. Would it be all right with you if we could talk? I know you haven't slept all night. That's understandable. I can't imagine how hard it is to lose your only child. What do you mean? Detective, would you mind leaving us alone to talk? Well, to be honest, Doctor, I really don't think you should be left alone with him. I want to talk to him. Alone. It'll be fine, Detective. Yes, Detective. Leave. We'll be right outside the door, if you need anything. Bring my son back to me. We're searching for him now. Every officer here and in the county are at Crystal Lake. Not you two. Why? You don't care? Detective, we'll be here. You go do what you need to do. We'll be right outside the door. Okay. First off, may I call you by your first name? No. <laughs> That's fine, Mrs. Voorhees. Do you have children? Um, unfortunately not, but my wife and I are trying. Do you want a boy or a girl? I'd be happy with either. Have you picked a name? <laughs> Actually, we talk about it a lot. If it's a girl, we like Rachel and Thomas if it's a boy. Rachel and Tommy. Yes. I was going to call my son Joshua, but when I saw him, when they took him from inside me and put him in my arms, I knew his name was Jason. Hmm. He must have been a wonderful boy. He is. Jason is a wonderful boy. <clears throat> Mrs. Voorhees, I'm... Pamela. You may call me Pamela. Oh, okay. Pamela. I'm just a medical doctor, basically. But Detective Madry wanted me to come talk with you about the situation with your son. What do you mean? Well, they're concerned that if they're unable to... Uh, Dr. Jarvis, the chief needs to speak with you. Immediately. He's calling from the camp. We'll continue this later. What happened? Did they find my son? I want you all to know something. You're going to be punished for what you have done. My child is laying at the bottom of that lake. He's all alone, freezing. And you, you do nothing. God damn you. I hope you all burn in hell.
Mrs. Voorhees, what's going... What are you doing? Stop that! Leave me alone. Get out of here! Mrs. Voorhees, please, give me the microphone. Give me my boy back! You fucking... Police Chief Kelly! Kelly! Okay, ma'am, let's simmer down. No! I'll kill you! I'll fucking kill all of you! Is it recording now? Uh, yes, sir. That fixed it. <clears throat> this is Police Chief Michael Kelly of the Crystal Lake Sheriff's Department. Today is June 15th, 1957. The time is 9.54 p.m. This recording is the confession of Pamela Voorhees to the murder of Elias Voorhees, her husband and father of son, Jason. No, I did not say that. Ma'am, you just told me a few minutes ago you killed your husband, and you agreed to let us tape your confession. I did kill him. I, I had to. He was hurting my Jason. Again. Fine. He was hurting his son and... No, you fucking moron. Jason was not his son. I've told you that. <sighs> okay, Mrs. Voorhees, why don't you tell me again? About Jason's father? I don't know his name. He never said a word to me that night. He just did what he wanted to me. Then left me there, bleeding. And after all these years, you've not seen him again. I would never, ever want to see him again. Ever. Then Jason never knew his real father. I married Elias because he was strong. I thought he would protect us. Protect you? Yes, from him. I could feel he was out there, watching us, wanting to take Jason away from me. So why would you want to kill your husband, Elias? Because he was hurting your son? Joe, let her answer. Why did you kill him? Because Jason wanted me to. He told me to. Kill him, Mommy. He's hurting me, Mommy. You kill him. So this very young child, your son, told you to kill your husband? Yes. <sighs> Mrs. Voorhees, as I understand your son's condition, I find it hard to believe that he spoke to you, much less... How dare you? My son's condition? No, no, Pamela. He didn't mean it. I am done talking to you. All of you. I don't trust any of you. I'm going to find my son myself. Mrs. Voorhees, please don't leave. We need to continue your... Fuck you. You are nothing but heartless murderers. You are leaving my son to die all alone out there. It's dark out, Pamela. You could get hurt. You're the ones who will get hurt. All of you. This camp now has a death curse. Don't ever forget that. Chief, should I... Let her go. Poor bitch is off her rocker. Can't believe a goddamn thing she says. We're done here. Just a few questions, and then we'll let you go see your sister. Okay, Tommy? Is Trish okay? The doctor said she's going to be absolutely fine. She's just resting right now. And my mom? Where's my mom? Uh, excuse me, who are you? Yeah, hi, Detective Webb. I'm uh, Detective Alex Rigo. This is Dr. Marino from Wessex Children's Hospital. Hello. Hi, Nicole Webb. Nobody told me you were coming. Well, this incident has been elevated to a state matter, Detective Webb. I'll get you up to speed in a moment. Well, hello there. You must be Thomas. Tommy. Tommy Jarvis. Well, it's nice to meet you, Tommy. We all understand you've had an extremely difficult night. Has... Has anyone seen Gordon? Who's Gordon? My dog. He... He must be hungry. I'll make sure Gordon's fine, and then he gets his breakfast, okay? Tommy, we're all so very sorry about your mother. What do you mean? Where's my mom? He doesn't know. I was just about to tell him. Where's my mother? Tommy, I'm... Hello, Tommy. My name is Lauren Marino, and I'm a child psychologist. Do you know what that means? You work with crazy people? <laughs> well, sometimes. But that's not why I'm here today. I help kids your age after they've gone through something traumatic. You know, something really bad. 
I'm here to help you, Tommy. Where's my mom? Dr. M M Marie. No. Marino. But you can just call me Lauren, okay? Don't think of me as a doctor. Think of me as your new friend. I'm here to protect you. Is my mom dead? Lauren? Detectives, could I please have a moment with Tommy? Alone? Of course, doctor. My mom's dead too, isn't she? I'm so sorry, Tommy. But yes, she's gone. It was Jason. Jason killed all of them. Who is Jason, Tommy? Jason Voorhees. He's the man that did all of this. Your sister, Patricia, she told the police that you saved her, that you killed the man who attacked you. Jason. Do you remember killing the man, Tommy? Yes. When detectives Rigo and Webb come back in, they're going to ask you a bunch of questions about what happened, about the man. Can you be strong and answer them for me? One moment, please. Do you think you can answer their questions for me, Tommy? I want to see Trish. And you will, in just a moment, I promise. But first, it's very important. You need to tell the detectives everything you remember, okay? Okay. I'll be right here with you, Tommy. Come in, detectives. How are we doing, Tommy? He's still in shock. I want to see Trish now. We just have a few more questions about the man who did this. Jason. His name was Jason. Do you remember ever seeing the man near your home before tonight? Did the man ever threaten you or your family? Why do you keep calling him the man? It was Jason. Jason Voorhees. Uh, Tommy, where is your father? Do you know how we can contact him? I haven't talked to my dad since my eighth birthday. He's in Mexico with, with Sally. Who's Sally? Do you have her phone number? No! Lauren, I don't want to do this right now. I want to see Trish. Trish! Trisha! I suggest we take a break and let Tommy see his sister for a moment. Tommy, the man who attacked you, did he say anything? Did he... Trish? Trisha! Tommy! Tommy, wait! God damn it, stop the tape. Stop the... Few more questions. We know you must be tired. I have the nurses setting up a bed for you in Trisha's room. Does that sound good, Tommy? Tommy? Uh-huh. Now, the man who attacked you. Jason. Okay, we can call him Jason for now, but we're still trying to identify who he really was. You don't believe me? Tommy, your sister told us that you shaved your head before you attacked Jason. Why? I thought that if I looked like him, that he would listen to me. That we could understand each other. Uh, when you say understand each other, you do understand that the man who did this was extremely dangerous and disturbed, right? Yeah. No one is mad at you, Tommy. We know that you killed him in self-defense. But you do understand that killing is wrong. Even though he was a bad man, do you feel sad about killing him? I'm sleepy. Tell me how you're feeling about killing the man... Jason. I don't know. Had you ever killed anything before? Uh, an animal or something? I don't think so. You don't think so? Do you think it's wrong to kill someone, Tommy? Hey, I have a visitor here who would very much like to see Tommy. Huh? Gordon! Oh, Gordon, you're okay. Thank God, Gordon, old boy. Detectives, I must insist that Tommy sleep. He's been through a lot. More than any boy his age should ever go through. We still have a lot of questions that need answering, Dr. Marino. And I will help you with that, Detective Rigo. But right now, I'm going to put Tommy and Gordon here to bed. Excuse us. Come on, Gordo. <laughs> Let's go see Trish. It gives me the creeps. Did he say anything else that could help us figure out who our John Doe is at the morgue? Eh, just more Jason Voorhees bullshit. That's why they sent me. Sir, Jason Voorhees is quite real to the good citizens of Crystal Lake community. We've been through a lot here over the last few years. Yeah, a lot of copycats. A lot of deranged psychopaths who want to see a sick ghost story come true. 
With all due respect, Detective Rigo, the... With all due respect, Detective Webb, Jason Voorhees drowned in that lake of yours back in 1957. It was his psychotic mother that started all this, and your good citizens who created this bogeyman bullshit. If your department can't identify whoever this deranged kid chopped up, then instruct the morgue to make up a name to give the public, and then cremate him. This Jason Voorhees shit ends now. Am I understood? But, sir, if I may just... You may not. That's all for now, Detective. Yes, sir. Hi, Tommy. Hey, Lauren. Here, uh, I wanted to show you my newest mask. Oh, wow. She's beautiful. And interesting ears. Does she have a name? That's Arwen. She's the elf princess from a book I'm reading. Ah, Lord of the Rings. Whoa. You know something? You're pretty rad for an older lady. I'm going to choose to take that as a compliment, young man. <laughs> so, with Trish leaving for college this fall, she and I have been speaking about the next steps for your treatment. I'm sick of treatment. Aren't I done yet? Tommy, it's only been a year since everything happened. We have a long way to go. And with how things have been lately, we actually need to step your therapy up a few notches. Just because of one stupid fight? Eleven fights, Tommy. But... I have wonderful news. I've spoken to my associates at that special hospital I told you about, and they've accepted you. They have an incredible staff that's perfect for this next, more aggressive phase of your treatment. Plus, you'll get to be with other kids like you. You mean crazy? You're not crazy, Tommy. You've just been through a major trauma. But now you'll be around other kids who have had similar experiences. It's an exceptional program, the best there is in the country. Really? Really. You're going to thrive there. I know it. Trish and I are going to bring you there tomorrow. Can Gordon come with me? It's a hospital, Tommy. You know the rules about pets. Oh, man. Can I bring my masks? Absolutely. Now, start packing, mister. Patient responded positively to being institutionalized, prescribing Thorazine for the first two weeks of acclimation just as a precaution. Dr. Neil Gordon will take over as Jarvis's primary physician once admitted at Weston Psychiatric Hospital in Springwood. Hello, Tommy. Hi, Dr. Marino. Please have a seat. Thanks. So, what happened this time? I... I don't know. You don't know. Tommy, this is the fourth program you've been kicked out of. Sorry, Dr. Marino. What's with the Dr. Marino stuff? Please. But sorry, Lauren. First, you got kicked out of Weston for fighting. I've told you. The other kids there were crazier than I am. I couldn't even sleep there. Smith's Grove, patient expelled for fighting other patients. Glen Echo, patient expelled for attacking orderlies. New Orleans Psychiatric, patient claimed to hear a man crying for his father in the nearby swamp every night and threatened suicide if not transferred. <sighs> Jesus, Tommy, how will you ever get better if you can't stay in treatment? Because I'm never going to get better. I've been institutionalized since I was fucking 12. <laughs> when does it end? When you finally let us help you, Tommy. That's when it ends. No one can help me. I still see him. Jason Voorhees. It used to just be the nightmares, but now it even happens when I'm awake. The drugs don't work, but they just keep giving me more of them. I can't live like this anymore. I can't. I've got one last idea. You're not going to like it, but just listen to me, okay? I'm going to admit you to the Unger Institute. Unger? But I thought the whole point was to get me away from Crystal Lake. It's an extreme direction, but it's the best way to prove to yourself, once and for all, that Jason Voorhees is dead and can't hurt anyone ever again. No, I, I can't go back there. You don't have a choice anymore, Tommy. And listen to me. You can't get thrown out this time. Do you understand? This is my last option, because no one else will take you. If you blow this, 
the state will take over and stick you in a padded cell for the rest of your life. I'm not going to let that happen on my watch. I know you're scared, Tommy. But this is how you're going to beat this once and for all. I'm committing you to Unger. You're going back to Crystal Lake. Okay, this is a reminder that you are being recorded, Dr. Marina. I understand. So, why did you need me to come in, Detective Webb? Yesterday morning, there was an incident at Pinehurst. Pinehurst Youth Development Center? I'm confused. Indeed. One patient murdered another with an axe in cold blood in front of several of the other patients. Jesus. Now, we're still investigating the incident, but we have the killer in custody. And we have more than enough witnesses to put the guy away for life. A real low life named Victor Faden with a history of violent crimes. What does any of this have to do with me? I don't have any patients at Pinehurst. That's the thing, Dr. Marino. Apparently, you do. Tommy Jarvis was transferred from Unger to Pinehurst just two days before the incident. Transferred? Without my knowledge? Apparently so. Now, when we ran the list of patients currently at Pinehurst and the Jarvis kid came up, well, I'm sure you remember the delightful Detective Rico from State? Yes. Let's just say that Jarvis being at Pinehurst, back near Crystal Lake, right when another violent murder happens, the coincidence has some people on edge, Lauren. Now, listen, Tommy Jarvis has had his issues, but he would never... Chop someone up? Again? Detective Webb, are you accusing my patient of something? Not at all. I'm on your side here, but Alex Rigo is on his way back here, and let's just say he's never been a big fan of Jarvis or his Jason Voorhees story. So before he starts asking questions at Pinehurst, you might want to... I'll reach out to Dr. Leonard there today and check in on how Tommy is doing. I think that would be a very good idea. We meet again, Mr. Jarvis. Detective Rigo? And you remember my associate, Detective Webb? Yeah. Hello. It's unfortunate that we seem to always meet under such horrible circumstances. Why am I being questioned? Why am I being recorded? Just policy, Tommy. As we told Dr. Marino before we came to see you, you are in absolutely no trouble. How's your chest? I got slashed with a machete. How do you think it feels? The man who attacked you, who murdered all those people. The man who impersonated Jason Voorhees. He was a local paramedic. The boy that was murdered at Pinehurst last week, Joey? Well, it turns out that was actually his son. He went nuts. Dressed up like the Crystal Lake bogeyman and... Is that what this is, Detective Rigo? You're still trying to prove that the man I killed when I was a child wasn't actually Jason Voorhees? Not at all, Tommy. This is a completely separate incident. Then why are you in my hospital room? Because here we are, again, on the heels of yet another massacre where you happen to be one of the only surviving witnesses. We just need your account of what happened. You know what happened. You know who did this, and you know why. You have his body. We're done here. Tommy, please. We just need to... You need to leave. If you want to speak with me, I'll need a lawyer present. Shut it off. But, sir, we... Let's go, Webb. Now. Beginning session. Thank God you're all right, Tommy. Are you in pain? Yeah, but the meds work. I'm so sorry that you had to go through this, Tommy. I didn't even know that Unger had transferred you to Pinehurst. That's because it was my idea. I asked to be moved to Pinehurst. What? I'm tired of being in treatment. I hate living this way. I, I, I keep thinking about why you sent me to Unger to face my fear. Well, Pinehurst is even closer to Crystal Lake than Unger, so... It was my idea to be moved there. Unger should have notified me. That's on them. But talk to me. Knowing what happened... That a crazy person put on a hockey mask and murdered people. I know what you're getting at. I mean, this is exactly what Rigo has always claimed happened the first time I faced off with Jason and killed him. That it couldn't have been the real Jason Voorhees, right? Just a random psychopath trying to act out an urban legend, right? Forget Detective Rigo. How do you feel about Jason now, Tommy? After this crazy paramedic thing, 
I should be feeling better about all of it, shouldn't I? So tell me, why do I feel worse? How so? I... I... I'm going to tell you something right now that's going to make me sound even crazier than ever. I'm listening. Dr. Marino. Lauren. What if I'm Jason Voorhees? What makes you say that, Tommy? Last night, I had a dream that I killed Pam. Pam Roberts? Dr. Leonard's assistant at Pinehurst? It was so real. I... I had his hockey mask, Jason's mask, and I stood right there where you are now, and I stabbed Pam to death. Her blood, it was all over me, all over the floor. There was so much blood. Tommy, you just survived an unbelievable trauma again. A dream like that is not unusual given all you've been through. You're not hearing me. I, I think I'm dangerous. I think I should be locked up. I, I think I'm becoming Jason. Tell me about the Unger Institute, Tommy. You've been back there almost two months now. It's the same as it ever was. Are you sharing in group session yet, or still keeping to yourself? I've made one friend, I guess. Tell me about your friend. Alan? There's not much to say. He's nice. He believes me. Believes you how? He believes me that Jason Voorhees is real. Tommy, now that you and I have had time to analyze what happened at Pinehurst, can you see any more clearly that Jason Voorhees was merely a persona that a psychotic person used to carry out their homicidal fantasies? All of these years. And you don't believe me either, Lauren. You never believed me, did you? It's not about whether or not I believe you. Whether it was a crazy person in a mask, or if the actual Jason Voorhees had really come back from the dead and attacked you when you were 12 years old, he's dead now. No one is going to hurt you or anyone else. Detective Rigo said that the body of the man who attacked me was cremated. Is that true? I honestly have no way of knowing that, Tommy. But yes, I would assume that it is true. Well... I suppose there's really only one way to know for sure, huh? And how is that? Alan says he knows where Jason is buried. Where they buried his ashes. Tell me. You're regressing. Actually, I'm not. All of these years suffering over this, when the answer was right in front of me. I know what I have to do now. We're rolling, Detective Rigo. So... Here we are again, Dr. Marino, only this time, it only took a matter of weeks before there was another massacre. And once again, your patient, Tommy Jarvis, is in the middle of it. I haven't spoken with Tommy yet, detectives. I have no details for you until I can speak to my patient alone. Do you know what I think? What I've always thought since the day I got sent to this godforsaken Camp Crystal Lake place to clean up the first Jarvis mess? I really don't care, Detective Rigo, but I bet my pension that you're going to tell me anyway. I think that Jason Voorhees is nothing but an urban legend. And for some reason, it's compelling enough to attract sick and damaged people like the patient you work with to come here and carry out their homicidal fantasies as Jason. Uh, what do you want me to say, Detective Rigo? That I agree with you that Jason is an urban legend? Oh, I know you and I agree on that front. I just wish my associate, Ms. Webb, here could say the same. Sir, I've lived here my entire life. They can change the name of the place to Forest Green or Green Fucking Acres. It will always be Crystal Lake. And people will never forget what happened here. Or how many times it's happened. I understand that, but it wasn't fucking Jason Voorhees. Jesus Christ, do you even realize that the legend doesn't even make a lick of sense? Jason drowned as a little boy and died, right? But then you locals think he came back from the dead to avenge his mother and was somehow now a grown man? And now he just keeps coming back? Look, I've never once let superstition affect my work. 
All I'm saying is that at a certain point, you've got to look at the facts and... And the fact remains that no one on God's green earth has done more to perpetuate this bullshit story and keep inviting this horrible shit to Crystal Lake's front door than that Jarvis freak. And Dr. Marino here insists on humoring Tommy Jarvis instead of locking him away where no one can hear from him again. I've had enough of this. Unless you're accusing my patient of an actual crime, then I'm done here. Oh, you're done here, all right. The way I see it, you have two options. You can either continue to defend your precious basket case Jarvis while bodies pile up, or you can help us shut his fucking mouth once and for all and stop getting people killed. I'm glad this is being recorded because I believe you just threatened my patient. No, doctor, I'm threatening you. You've had years to shut down this raving lunatic, but instead, he's only gotten worse. And now I got yet another pile of innocent corpses, dead sheriffs, and an entire campground full of terrified, scarred-for-life children because of what Tommy Jarvis brought to this godforsaken place. So do your fucking job. Either cure this asshole's insanity or lock him away where he won't be heard from again. Oh, God is my witness. I'll make sure that you never practice psychiatry again. Where are you going? Hey, hey, you can't just... God damn! Shit, holy... Jesus, jumping Christmas shit! Shut it off, Webb! Thank you for meeting with me, Tommy. I put Jason back at the bottom of Crystal Lake, where he belongs. They've had divers out there all morning. Tommy, they haven't found anyone yet. That's impossible! Who's saying that? Rigo? That lying bastard! Maybe you put someone in that lake. Someone who was killing innocent people. But it was not Jason Voorhees. Do you understand me? They've gotten to you, too. Oh, God, they've gotten to you, too. Nobody has gotten to anybody. But, Tommy, the police are convinced that psychos keep coming here to masquerade as Jason because you keep perpetuating the story. Alan knew where Jason was buried. He brought me there. I dug him up, and his body was right there in the grave. He was never cremated, Lauren. But... But he came back to life. He killed Alan and all of those people. And it's all my fault. Yes, Tommy, it is your fault that you attract these, these maniacs. All this town wants is to bury the Voorhees story, but you, everywhere you go, you keep it alive, and that's why this happens. There are witnesses. An entire camp full of witnesses saw- Saw someone dressed in a hockey mask, once again. Don't you see the pattern here, Tommy? I watched Jason crawl out of his grave! No, you didn't, because that's not possible! Tommy, I'm sorry. I can't help you anymore. My God. They're gonna kill me, aren't they? What? Who's they? Who's going to kill you, Tommy? You! You sold me out to them, didn't you? You told me you were my friend. The night I met you, you, you said you, you'd protect me. Now they're gonna kill me because I know the truth. Tommy, stop. Put down that lamp. How could you do this to me? I'm the one who finally killed Jason, me! But they're all so desperate to cover it up that now you've signed my death warrant. You're out of control, Tommy. Put down that lamp and... <laughs> I'm sorry, Lauren. I, I, I didn't want to hurt you, but... They're coming to get me. hearing this then you found my website and they haven't taken it down yet <clears throat> my name is Tommy Jarvis and I know the truth about Jason Voorhees the truth that they don't want you to know 30 years ago I survived an encounter with Jason when he attacked my family and a group of teenagers renting the house next to ours at Crystal Lake Jason killed them all including my mother only my sister and I survived, because I took him out. But what did they do? They institutionalized me for over a decade. They told me I was crazy, 
that Jason wasn't real. Even my own sister eventually even gave up on me and stopped calling. Trish, if you're out there somewhere and if you hear this, I forgive you. I know that they must have gotten to you. I love you, and I don't blame you. I just, I just hope you're safe. Several years ago, I dug up Jason's grave to see once and for all if his ashes were really in it like the authorities claimed they were. They lied. They lied to me, to all of us. They never cremated him. And Jason came back again, killing over a dozen people. It wasn't someone impersonating Jason like they want you to believe it was him. But this time, there were witnesses Megan Garris, the sheriff's daughter, Deputy Rick Cologne, and a whole camp full of kids. They survived that night. They know the truth, but but they, they've all been brainwashed or, or, or threatened into believing what they want them to believe. Yes, they want everyone to believe that what they saw was merely another psychopathic imposter pretending to be Jason Voorhees. But I knew the truth. So then after me because I wouldn't repeat and sell their lies. I, I had to knock out my psychiatrist to escape. Dr. Lauren Marino, I'm sorry that I hurt you and I hope that you're all right. I only did what I had to do after they had gotten to you. I think I've tracked down one of the other survivors, someone else who knows the truth. I should keep moving. I'll post again soon. Tommy Jarvis here. Sorry, it's been a while since I last posted, but I'm now at a different, more secure location. I think I'm safe for now. I know that I must sound crazy on these recordings, but I swear to God that I'm not. I was able to track down one of the other survivors from the night I dug up Jason. And he came back. Deputy Rick Cologne. I locked Rick in a jail cell that night so that I could try and stop Jason. But Rick knew what really happened. When you know it, though, Rick just so happened to move away and never be heard from again. Bastards got to him, too. It took me a few years, but eventually I tracked Rick Cologne down in Maryville, Ohio. He was still a police officer, but apparently... He had been going under the last name Pastori, his wife's maiden name. I found him too late, though. I found out that Rick had supposedly been murdered by some maniac in Maryville named Pinker. Kind of ironic. You flee one place because you know the truth, that there's an unstoppable killer on the loose, only to be murdered by another. If that's really what happened, I'll never know for sure. Personally, I think Rick knew too much and was starting to talk. I think they took him out. And that's why I run. That's why I hide. I can't trust anyone anymore. But, but now with these recordings, I can get the truth out there. Over the years, Jason Voorhees has come back and done it again. Crystal Lake, a cruise ship. I've seen the news and I've put it all together each time. No matter how they try and cover it up, they can't fool me. I don't know how Jason got loose and from where I put him in the lake, but God. Damn it. He's still out there. I know it. <laughs> they think that people will just forget about him and not speak of him. Well, that no one else will be killed by him. They actually think that every time these massacres happen, it's just some crazy person pretending to be Jason. But the truth to anyone hearing this is that you can never kill Jason. You can't kill death. Oh, you better believe Jason lives, my friends. I'm not crazy. It's everyone else who's fucking crazy. Don't buy their conspiracy that it's all just a legend. Jason is real. But I know how to trap him. I know how to make it stop again. All I need is to get back to Crystal Lake. And then... I'll... We need to take the microphone away now, Tommy. It's time for your medication. No. 
No, no more medication. Listen to me, goddammit. Stay away from Crystal Lake until I can put Jason back in hell where he belongs. Stay away. What? What are you doing? No, 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 no. Don't make me go to sleep. Please. No sleep. No sleep. Thank you, gentlemen. You can put Mr. Jarvis in the quiet room for tonight. Patient continues to describe various conspiracy theories whenever asked to record his thoughts. He seems convinced that he is on the run out somewhere in society and appears either unaware or in extreme denial of his actual location. Jarvis once again exhibits intense fear of nightmares and needs to be highly medicated in order to sleep. I am still trying to figure out how he's been lacerating himself while sleeping, but tonight I will personally be monitoring his behavior throughout the night. Dr. Lauren Marino, Weston Psychiatric, Springwood. <laughs>